All right, what's up everyone? I'm Faloki, and the Seattle Seahawks have missed out on Jadavion Clowney and Yannick Ngakwe both, which is pretty disappointing, but honestly pretty expected. As many of you may know, the Seattle Seahawks have missed out on Jadavion Clowney. He ended up signing a one-year deal to the Tennessee Titans for $12 million with incentives that could bring him up to $15 million. So, you know, good for him. Congratulations to Jadavion Clowney. He got his money. He got $15 million. The, the amount that he wanted later on in free agency, once he kind of realized he wasn't going to get the $17, $20 million that he was wanting, initially so you know good for him he got the money that he wanted he's going to be going to the Tennessee Titans you know they might be a good team I don't think they're as much of a Super Bowl contender as the Seahawks or maybe even the Saints who had a lot of interest in him as well but you know good for him I think Derrick Henry will probably be very successful again this year the Titans might go back to the playoffs do pretty well with Derrick Henry getting 200 yards a game who knows but you know I, I wish the best for Jadavion Clowney I don't hate the guy I mean we only had him for what less than a year we didn't really have any ties to him obviously it would have been nice for him to come back because i mean we did have a pretty okay trade for him so it would have been nice to bring him back we definitely need him on the defensive line we need him in the pass rush but it, it is disappointing but what are you going to do i mean he got the money obviously he was talking about how he wanted to win a super bowl that was his main focus of going to a team that wanted to win a super bowl that could win a super bowl and it kind of just slowly showed more and more that he was wanting the money more than a super bowl win when you got past free agency you know every, every single day in free agency it looked more and more like Jadavion Clowney just didn't want to sign with a team and he just wanted to make money so, you know, it's whatever. Honestly, Jadavion Clowney, I wish him the best in Tennessee. I assume he'll probably do pretty well. I, I, I have no idea. He only had three sacks last year, but obviously he had a much bigger impact than his stats showed. So, I mean, I'm not too hurt by this. It would have definitely been nice to get Jadavion Clowney, especially since we missed out on Everson Griffin and Yannick Ngakwe. So, you know, Jadavion Clowney would have been really nice to bring in, but now it's just time for the Seahawks to move forward and hope that the pass rushers that they have on the team can actually, you know, work together, do really well. Maybe Alton Robinson could come and be a star. LJ Collier, maybe he can come in with a chip on his shoulder, do well. Bruce Irvin needs to come in, do well. Ben Samioa got to do something. Jaron Reed, I mean, he had 10 and a half sacks last season or the season before last season. So he needs to go back to that. You know, we have a lot of players that have potential to do great. So I have high hopes for our defensive line. I don't expect them to do well, but if they can play up to their potential, I think that there is definitely a, you know, a good, a good pass rush in there. You know, it, it on paper, it doesn't look as good as it possibly could have, but you know, I, I think if they all play very well up to the top of their potential, we could have a very good defensive line, but I don't expect it. We have a good defense anyway, but it is definitely disappointing to miss out on Jadavion Clowney. Another thing that I wanted to mention that I thought was really interesting about the Jadavion Clowney situation, like a little bit before he signed, was some reports coming out from Ian Rappaport and some other guys saying that the Saints wanted to do a sign and trade with another team. Like, I think it came out that they wanted the Browns to sign him for the $15 million or whatever deal, and then they wanted to trade a second rounder and a player so that the Browns could take the signing bonus and just take that penalty and then the Saints would get him for cheaper but he'd still be making the money he wanted and I I it definitely seems a bit sketchy a bit of collusion I don't know how that really goes down but apparently it got declined and like they couldn't get it through the NFL like they couldn't get it accepted to happen through the NFL so I guess that was one of the reasons why he was taking so long to sign because that was going on I have no idea that's just super interesting that's just something that I saw coming out and I thought that was just crazy you know a bit of collusion seems a bit sketchy seems a bit cheaty from the saints but you know if that would have happened that would have been pretty wild i mean the browns they could have signed him for like what 15 million give him a five million dollar signing bonus and then they would have just took that five million dollars got a second round pick and a player given him to the saints the saints would have got him on 10 million dollars non-guaranteed or something like that he would have got the money the saints would have got Jadavion Clowney. the browns would have got a player and a pick for just five million dollars you know that would have been good for all sides but i i guess the nfl said no that's what i've been seeing but i just thought that was super interesting i thought that was funny and you know kind of kind of wild and now to talk a little bit about yannick and gakwe of course the vikings ended up trading a second round pick and a fifth round pick in 2022 for yannick and gakwe from the jaguars the jaguars have just been getting rid of every single player on their team apparently i have no idea what their plan is there in jacksonville but I mean, good for them. They're doing what they want to do. But that is another player that the Seahawks ended up missing out on in the pass rush. And honestly, I'm more disappointed about the Everson Griffin, you know, losing the Everson Griffin than both of these players. Obviously, Jadavion Clowney, I definitely warmed up to the option of Jadavion Clowney, you know, later on when it was a couple weeks before the season started, before he had actually gotten signed. You know, maybe we could have brought him in one year, gone to a Super Bowl, let him walk. He would have gotten paid. Good for him. Both teams ended up doing well off of it. 
but you know I, I thought Everson Griffin was still the better option you know a cheap one-year veteran that could have brought experience could have brought production you know he he just knows the game he's been in the game for a while he wouldn't have been too high of a risk at all and he probably could have done pretty well but here Yannick Ngakwe is one of those trades and one of those like options that I wasn't really a big fan of from the start obviously it's become apparent with this Jamal Adams trade that the Seahawks are going to have to pay Jamal Adams after giving up a ton to get him but you know I'm not a huge you know I'm not against that because obviously Jamal Adams is probably the best safety in the league and he is still very young still can progress and you know if he plays well for Seattle if he signs back on a long-term deal I think that the trade would be worth it but this Yannick Ngakwe trade of course not too much was given up for him a second round pick and I think a conditional fifth round pick don't know what that means but I mean that's still not a lot even a second of fifth just that is not a lot for a very good edge rusher and you know Yannick Ngakwe I would have been fine having him but giving up a second round pick for a guy that the Seahawks probably would have had for one year because I don't think the Seahawks would have actually ended up extending him um you know Yannick Ngakwe he's definitely a good player we definitely need a lot of help in the pass rush but I mean we're starting contract negotiations with you know Shaquille Griffin we are going to have to pay Jamal Adams we still have Russell Wilson under contract and we might have to pay Chris Carson I have no idea what like, the Seahawks are planning on doing to try to re-sign him. I think that the Seahawks should re-sign him, not for big running back money whatsoever. Maybe like a two, three year deal on, you know, pretty average running back money because, you know, I think the Seahawks could kind of negotiate with him like, hey, look, you've been injured a lot but you're definitely good. So we can just meet in the middle instead of giving you high running back numbers because you're very good. We'll give you medium because you've been injured. So I don't know. I think that there would be a pretty good chance to bring back Chris Carson on a pretty cheap deal. But overall, Yannick Ngakwe, I mean, it, it would have been a pretty, you know, not too expensive trade, but we would have had to give him a lot to sign him back. And I was not a big fan of that. You know, especially after we got Jamal Adams, I don't think this Yannick Ngakwe trade was really ever an option for the Seahawks. I mean, obviously there's interest apparently. There was reported interest from the Seahawks, but I didn't think that a trade was going to be made because the Seahawks, I mean, I don't think they want to deal with paying Russell Wilson, paying Shaquille Griffin, paying Jamal Adams, and paying any other player that they have to have on the team, and then playing Yannick Ngakwe because that's going to be a ton of money. And honestly, I, I, like I said, I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't, I wasn't really a fan of Jadavion Clowney or the Yannick Ngakwe options. I thought Everson Griffin was a great option. We ended up missing out on that. And uh, I mean, it's really disappointing that we missed out on all three of the pretty good options that we could have got. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? We just have to move on to next season. Hope for the best. You know, the season starts in less than a week. Hopefully that the Seattle Seahawks can end up doing very well this season. Hopefully their defensive line and offensive line don't kill them this year. But I have high hopes. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, are you sad that we missed out on these opportunities? I know a lot of Seahawks fans are really disappointed with Jadavion Clowney going to the Titans instead of the Seahawks. Uh, I'm more disappointed about Everson Griffin. A lot of people are disappointed about Yannick Ngakwe. But let me know in the comments what you think. Like I said, subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you enjoyed. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a great day.